thermodynamic systems and system properties. In this video, we define first a thermodynamic system. Then we talk about the difference between open and closed systems and discuss the important system properties. Here we're looking at a specific type of system, a thermodynamic system. In a thermodynamic system, we are particularly concerned with the flow of energy and matter. This slide depicts two types of thermodynamic systems, closed systems and open systems. As you can see, both of these systems can exchange energy with its surroundings. However, only open systems can exchange matter with the surroundings. This means that any mass used in a closed system must come from within the system and stays within the system. One question you might ask yourself is, is Earth a closed or open thermodynamic system? In the next few slides, we'll, we will go over four key system properties. The first two are depicted here and refer to the nature of the system. Interdependency indicates the degree of interconnectedness among the subsystems within the system. A spider's web is often a highly interconnected system. If you tug on one part of the web, the tug will be felt throughout the system. Redundancy is the extent to which there are duplicate paths within the system to produce the same result. Compact disks oftentimes have four redundant tracks of the same information so that if there's a speck of dust on one of the bits, there are three others which can provide the same information. This is an example of redundancy. The capacity of the system depends on where the system boundary is placed. It also depends on the properties of the system itself. The capacity refers to the productivity of the system. This next property, resiliency, describes the ability of the system to adapt to changes or perturbations in the surroundings. In general, greater redundancy should produce greater resiliency. For example, if the telephone lines to a building are somehow cut, but the building is still connected to the internet, the communication system with the outside world is resilient. However, the trade-off is that you are using more resources to, to achieve the same result. So these are the four properties, interdependency, redundancy, capacity, and resiliency. These four qualities describe the nature of a system. Let's look at these key system properties in another way. C.S. Holling represents adaptive systems as going through cycles in which their properties are represented on these three axes. So this is the same set of ideas, but represented in a three-dimensional set of axes. So you can see that the axes are resilience, interconnectedness, and productive capacity. So that's the same th three ideas that we were talking about in the last slide. So quoting from C.S. Holling, Productive capacity, or wealth, sets limits for what is possible. It determines the number of alternative options for the future. Connectedness, or interconnectedness, or controllability, determines the degree to which a system can control its own destiny. Resilience, as achieved by adaptive capacity, determines how vulnerable the system is to unexpected disturbances and surprises that can exceed or break that control. So a system naturally goes through a cycle. As systems grow in interconnectedness, they also grow in productive capacity. Economic systems illustrate this point well. Eventually, these systems become highly productive and highly interconnected, yet highly vulnerable to external perturbations. That is, they have a low resilience. So they begin here at a state of low interconnectedness, low productivity, and as they expand their connectedness, their productivity goes up and their resilience goes down. This is the idea that's known as economy of scale. So the global economic system recently illustrated the concept of non-resilient, highly interconnected, high-capacity systems. 
many of the developed countries were reliant upon the economic activity of the U.S., so it was highly connected to the system. The collapse of the U.S. economic system precipitated a worldwide collapse in the global economic system. In natural systems that encounter a collapse events, such as a fire in a highly interconnected, highly bioproductive, mature forest, the way they recover from this collapse is to begin a series of disconnected experiments. In other words, they traverse the second dotted line. They go from an economy of scale, in a sense, to the original position where they're exploring, in a way, an economy of scope. An economic analog to this would be an economy of scope where goods and services are exchanged on local levels, drawing from the local diversity of human and environment. For example, in Europe, small farms were less impacted by the global collapse because they rely on a local economy. So what's represented in this figure is two different types of endpoints. One is an economy of scale where you're functioning in a high productivity place, largely interconnected, high efficiency, and very low resilience. The other end of the spectrum is an economy of scope where you're actually not interconnected. The capacity is lower, but there's a high resilience, a high degree of innovation, and a high degree of experimentation. So in an economy of scope, the value comes from the diversity of the ideas and the goods and services. In an economy of scale, the value comes from the uniformity of the goods and services. So these are really two opposite ideas and opposite ways of approaching economic activity. In summary, thermodynamic systems are concerned with the exchange of thermal energy. Open systems can exchange energy and mass with the surroundings. Closed systems, on the other hand, can only exchange energy with the surroundings. The four key properties of systems are redundancy, capacity, interdependency, and resilience. In the next video, we'll take a deeper look at the behavior of a system and the causes of the behavior.